a show that tackles the big issues affecting the BVI and the rest of the Caribbean, searches for answers to today's big questions, and gives viewers a unique perspective on developing stories. Follow the big story with me, Kathy Richards, only on GTV. This show is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park, NV Salon Spa Nail and Barbershop, the Wellness Center, Medical and Behavioral Health Clinics, HOV Medical and Digicel. Sign up for Digicel Plus Home Light Bundles, faster internet movies and sports. Poetry at its best. Out of Chicago, Illinois, she goes by the name of Kay Love. Every element is elegant, is effortless. Eros, the Prince of Poetry. I want to be entrenched in love, drenched in love, dipped in love. Racing the stage in the British Virgin Islands on the 10th of February as a Time in Time promotion presents Step to the Mic. An evening of poetry also featuring local artists including Tishani Hall and Lynette Rapsat. Open mic for the first 15 persons to sign up. Captain Mulligans is the place to be on the 10th of February. Tickets cost $25 at the door. This event is sponsored by Nani K Hotel, the Government of the Virgin Islands and the Ministry of Education, Universe and Sports. This is The Big Story. I'm Kathy Richards. Thank you so much for joining us for today's edition. We're back here with the BVI Electricity Cooperation, its administrative staff. Uh, this conversation today, uh, Dr. Smith, is based on what we would have heard Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton state in the House of Assembly, which has raised the some eyebrows for me. I recall on the very first in conversation that we would have had via this format where you did state that no additional costs will be put on the people of U.S. Van Dyke as a result of the additional costs the BVI electricity will incur in having a generator on island while you guys await the repair of the subsea cable. Uh, with that being said first, uh, Let's first hear exactly what Honorable Skelton said in the House of Assembly. I attended a meeting in Gosman X last night and a matter came up. I didn't discuss it with the minister because I didn't want to give him, I want him to go do his research, the Minister of Communication and Works. The people in Gosman X, they lost their subsea cable and it, it's taken a long time to repair the cable for all sorts of reasons. And I understand electricity has put a generator in adjustment decks. And because of their putting the generator in adjustment decks to alleviate the problem in adjustment decks, they are charging the residents of adjustment decks exorbitant electricity bills because the high speed generator, Madam Speaker, will definitely burn more fuel than what's on Tartola. But this is a different situation. You were supplying someone with power, your cable failed, now you have to do things to to get power back to the people, and now you charge them um, electricity bill sometimes 30% more than they are paying in Tartola. This is not right, Madam Speaker. And the Minister for Communication and Works need to jump on top of this and get it corrected. I know the answer he's going to come back to me with, but it can't be right. It needs to be corrected and corrected quickly. So, Dr. Smith, when this was said, I totally, like I said, was caught by surprise. How do you respond in this moment? Thank you, Caddy. Um, we ourselves are caught by surprise, you know what I said. Um, and we have been trying to deal with it very philosophically. Uh, and it brings to mind uh, an Arabian proverb that says there are four things that come not back. Right? It's the past life, the spent arrow, the missed opportunity, and the spoken word. Now, um, the leader of, a, of the opposition is a former general manager of Beaver Electricity Cooperation with intimate knowledge of how bills are calculated. And since he has left, 
the methodology has remained the same. So that is one fact. What was said in the House of Assembly uh, went to the heart of every self-respecting professional in the Beaver Electricity Cooperation as well. Because we know that that is just way off. The member also missed an opportunity as a <clears throat> someone who has intimate knowledge of that process to um, use the opportunity there to dispel a lot of rumors that have been circulating about how BVIC calculates bills and as a result he misspoke. That's the gentlest way I can put it. Um, you know, as professionals, um, we believe that we have a responsibility when we're in positions of influence and authority to exercise due care in what we say. And what I would like to say in as gentle a term as I can is that what the member said um, does not reflect the reality of the matter. What I told you the other day and what I communicated to you the other day remains the same. Uh, and um, even though the cost to keep Jas Van Dijk in power is an extra cost for us, we don't change the bills. We don't change the bills. We will explain it in a few minutes, right? very soon. I'll have um, the friend the financial controller explain in detail how our bills are calculated. But essentially, there are two components to electricity bill. Number one, there is a banded structure that charges a specific rate per kilowatt hour depending on which band that you're in. That has been the same since inception. It has never changed. It remains so today. There's a second component to that electricity bill which essentially reflects the cost of electricity to produce, the, the, the cost of fuel to produce each unit of electricity, essentially. That is the second um, component of your, bill, of your bill. That fuel charge, <clears throat> what we call fuel surcharge on the bill, is the same for everyone in the territory. Whether it costs us X dollars to produce power for that particular location or 2X dollars to produce it for another location, the bill is the same for everyone in the territory. So therefore, when statements are made that suggest that the BV Electricity Corporation is charging the individuals on, or the residents or customers on Yasfin Dyke up to 30% more it's just totally untrue. It goes against our philosophy. It um, calls into question uh, perhaps even the integrity of the professionals, the board and the management and staff of BV Electricity Corporation. So the way that we're looking at it within this, this entity is that the, the member misspoke, okay? Because it's not a reflection of the truth at all. So what I'm, the, we also made a statement, um, we put it out yesterday, Sunday. Uh, not going into a lot of detail, but giving uh, customers throughout the territory uh, an update of what is happening. And again, reiterating the fact that the people of Yasundaik have no bills that are higher than others. It's the same for everyone. Now, the interesting thing, and this has been affecting the people in the territory for a while, and I'm not sure that it has sunk home as yet. The cost of fuel on a monthly basis fluctuates. And around August, I think it was the highest, we'll show it on the screen. Around August, September, yeah, around September, it was the highest. So we had a low period. Uh, it, it began high in January of 2023, and then it went to a low in June of 2023, and it went to an all-time high for 2023 in September, and then towards the end of December, it fell again. So, 
it is very possible that when you when you recognize that you're using the same amount of electricity, which is easy to um, figure out based on the kilowatt hour usage that you see on your electricity bill, that your bill is still higher. If you look at the fuel surcharge component, you'll notice that the fuel surcharge is different. And generally, that is the reason why uh, people's electricity bills fluctuate on a monthly basis. Now, sometimes we use power differently. You know, when it's hot, those of us that have AC in our homes, we use the AC and if that goes up, the electricity goes up. Or maybe you, um, you know, for some reason, you're just using a lot of electricity for that particular month for whatever purpose, right? So, what we'll do, um, Kat, because we don't intend to get into a, a back and forth with anyone about this. The methodology is the same. We have our professional integrity to protect and maintain. We'll continue to do that. But if there's misunderstandings, we're certainly willing to explain uh, to the public, to members of the House of Assembly. Um, we don't really want to encourage this, but if you have a, a query with your bill, we'll go into detail and tell you why your bill is what it is. Okay. But what we try to do now is we'll, we'll go through and allow, um, like we call them show, right? To we allow the financial controller to go through this brief presentation and then I'll just uh, open the floor for the, for the chief financial officer uh, and then my other professionals are two engineers here with me. Okay. okay. So for just for clarification <coughs> and reiteration, if I'm understanding what you said clear, uh, we, we, you do uh, elect power distribution for three islands and generation on two islands. So you generate on Tertola and Anigada. Right. Uh, you distribute from Tertola to Virgin Gorda yes. and Yasun yes, Bay. Um, and also Scrub Island and Kimano, okay, but yes. they're smaller. Okay, okay yes. Yeah. But in that process, uh, <clears throat> to distribute to Jos Van Dyke and to uh, Virgin Gorda and to generate on Anigada, all absorbs different. Right. So, it's a different cost. You you right, do right, yes. for the company as itself as, as a, a whole. Company. Yes. Yeah, but generally. There is one baseline in There's terms of yep. how uh, you build person. I think I understand. I understood that uh, during our first interview for this year when you explained why uh, there may not be such of a big uh, decrease in, in uh, power generation costs for Anigado when mm. you go right, to right, the solar. Yes. So I think I... <laughs> That's what we need, yes, right. Yes, okay. So, so that, that remains the same. It has never changed. It's been that way from inception. We haven't changed anything. Okay, good. I'm, 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 I'm mm -hmm. I have clarity and I hope that the audience yes, do. Yes, yes. So let's go with the presentation. Okay, so I'll just hold the mic uh, so he can speak and you can show, um, show can show <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> First of all, say who you are and what your position okay. is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Florencio Tarai. Uh, I'm the financial controller for uh, BVAEC. So what I'm going to do, um, this point is to just simply present the um, how the bills are calculated and how the fuel surcharge, which is one of the like you know biggest components of um, the bill, is is also determined. So first, um, how the bill is calculated. So there are as what Dr. Smith mentioned earlier, there are factors that affect affect the um, bills for um, consumers. The first is obviously the consumption level for each consumer. And then the second one is the standard electricity rate. This is the band rate that Dr. Speed mentioned earlier. So this is a long standing um, rate which dates back to 1970, yeah. yes. So it's a 40 year old rate that um, hasn't been changed because this is mandated by uh, legislation. And then the uh, third one is the fuel surcharge, which is um, one of the um, biggest um, issues with, like you know, for consumers. And then the final one is the fixed charge, so which is not really that that big. So for the um, consumption, um, we, I mean, we we know 
how the consumption is calculated. The current month, reading versus previous month, that's your consumption during the month. So in this case, uh, we have an example here. Your current month reading is 2,000 kilowatt hour, and then your previous month's um, reading is 1,500 kilowatt hour. So you have a consumption of 500 kilowatt hour for this month. So the second portion of the um, bill calculation is to go back to the band um, rate, which is mandated by, by law. So by law, black one is essentially one kilowatt hour consumption up to 60 kilowatt hour. So, and the rate for that is 24 cents per kilowatt hour. Block two, which is 61 kilowatt hours, up to 25,000 kilowatt hours is 22 and five cents. I mean, 22 cents and, and, and five. And then block three would be 25,001 kilowatt hours up to maximum 100,000 kilowatt hours, which is 19 cents. And the last block, which is block four, is anything that's above 100,000. So, which is the rate is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah, and change. So, now, so the, the, um, the final calculation for this standard rate is to distribute your consumption into different block components. So, we're, we're saying the first 60 kilowatt hour is priced differently. So the first 60 kilowatt hour is priced at 24 cents. So that's why here you have a bill of $14.40. Um, Black two, which is what remains of your 500 um, consumption, 440 kilowatt hours is priced at 22 cents, 22 five cents. And the total for that is 99 cents. So in the, the standard rate alone, you have a total of Hundred thirteen dollars and forty cents. Now, ninety-nine dollars. So yeah, sorry. The, the, the total, is yeah. The total yeah. is one thirteen. Yeah, the total for blocks one and two is hundred thirteen dollars and forty cents. Now, the the next component of the bill calculation is the fuel surcharge. So, fuel surcharge is charged to all your consumption regardless of which block it falls. So in this case, we have a total consumption of 500 kilowatt hours for the month, and that will be multiplied by, by the fuel surcharge rate for that particular month, because the fuel surcharge rate varies between like months, depending on how the fuel um, price goes, as what Dr. Smith explained earlier. So given the 500, dollar con uh, i mean 500 kilowatts consumption for that particular customer multiplied by the um surcharge rate of 13 dollars 7 13 cents 739 and that's this is the actual um fuel surcharge rate that will be we will see in 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 january this is the one that we calculated for december so people will see this um in in, in january so the fuel surcharge for this um, example is $68.70, and that's 500 kilowatt hours times the rate of 13 cents. So the final, the final component of the bill is the fixed charge, which is fixed at $2.50 per account. So it doesn't matter with whether you are like, you know, individual consumer or um, the um, commercial, the, 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 the current rate for BVIEC that's being charged to customers is $2.50 for fixed charge. So um, adding all the charges up top from the um, standard rate the fuel surcharge, the fixed charge, you have a total of bill of $184.60. Now, um, drilling into a bit on the fuel surcharge because this is the most, I think, interesting for everyone. So, fuel surcharge is um, a 
mainly affected by these factors here, um, as explained, partially explained by Dr. Smith. So global market price of fuel, so how the fuel, be, fuel price behave in the market, that will determine how the fuel shortage will also behave. The actual fuel consumption of BVAEC, which is the amount of fuel it uses up to produce the um, kilowatt hour sold during a particular month, which we call specific fuel consumption rate. And then the overall consumption by all consumers for that particular period, which is the unit sold. And then the final one will be the fuel subsidy from BVAEC, which is fixed. So now we'll go to the um, fuel surcharge calculation. So the, the, there are just basically three steps in calculating the fuel surcharge, which is very easy for, for everyone to follow. So first, we determine the specific fuel consumption rate for the period. So basically this is, as what Dr. Smith mentioned earlier, the amount of fuel required to produce a kilowatt hour of electricity. And then the second one is determine the average fuel price per US gallon for the period. And then the last one is the calculation mm -hmm. of uh, the fuel surcharge. So we'll, we'll go um, each of the steps down below. So just to illustrate, um, going back to what um, Dr. Smith mentioned earlier, this is the actual um, fuel pr price behavior during 2023. And if you, sorry. And if you look at how the fuel shortage behaved during 2023 as compared to how the fuel price behaved during 2023, you can see that there's a direct relationship between the two. As fuel price goes up, so is the fuel surcharge because, I mean, that's basically the fuel surcharge is dictated by the, the uh, global market um, fuel price for diesel number two, which is what we use for the um, production at um, our generation plants. So before you go down far in the mm -hmm. chart, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing there, fuel surcharge mm -hmm. for December in 2023, it has been at an all-time low. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's, well, it's Wait, low in May, but... Um, yeah, it's low in comparing May. for the rest of the year, it is just above May yeah. and June. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so, what mm -hmm. the heavy the heavy builds that you would have seen in um, for September, October, and even November, when you get your, your, your December bill in January, January. Mm -hmm. it would show a significant reduction add okay. on to the the subsidy that mm -hmm. domestic con uh, consumers would have yeah. gotten so, from. So we have to be very careful about that. You hear me, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful about that because it's the fuel surcharge component will be significantly lower. Now we have to be careful because I'm aware uh, in economics, right? Uh, when people know that they're going to have a low price, they use more or they buy more. So we have to look very carefully to ensure that is there is your consumption the same or did it go up, right? If it's the same, then you'll notice that your price would have dropped. Your car, your um, energy bill would have fell. Mm -hmm. But if you use more power because you're using Christmas lights and you're up all night, you're playing your stereo all night then you, it's quite possible that the electricity bill would actually go the other direction. And the other thing that I would have, have, have learned from my own personal experience, because I did a test like I told you mm -hmm. uh, in our last <laughs> interview, if we pay keen attention to our bill and if we don't understand uh, you know, all the fine writings on our mm -hmm. bill, mm -hmm. ask that information of the officers when they get their bill. Right. Because I didn't even realize what certain figures represent, although I'm seeing some narratives next that I really don't understand, <laughs> but until it was explained, and I was able to uh, pull bills from back to see yeah. where my consumption has increased or decreased or leveled out. Yeah, so you know, it's very important that you look, you examine your bill very carefully, because uh, I think we've said it uh, in a past interview, the BV Electricity Corporation has no intention, there's not the will, 
we have nothing to gain by charging a customer for electricity that they didn't use. We, we just, that's not just the way that we do business. Right? We, want, we try to be fair, we have a procedure. If you think a bill is high, uh, or that we reflected more energy than you think you've been using, you can ask for a meter test. You'll test your meter. If there's nothing wrong with it, then that is what it is. If something is wrong with your meter, for some reason the meter is malfunctioning and give you a wrong reading, then we correct that. Right? So um, I really, and I'm beginning to, we're going to have to start to hit this really, come, come at it. Right? Because there is this perception for some reason or the other uh, that the BV Electricity Corporation is just charging people what it wants. And it's, it's quite, uh, for professionals in the institution, it's quite disturbing. Uh, and we really need to um, get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible. Because it's not think, correct. What I think um, some people have a challenge with <coughs> understanding <coughs> whether or not you come physically to read my mm -hmm. meter or right. not? Mm -hmm. Or are you giving me, are you charging me based on an average? No. So, Kathy, one of the things that I think that some uh, of our customers don't appreciate is that we have the ability to read meters remotely. Uh, and we, um, it's a vast majority, upwards of 85%, uh, we read remotely. Uh, and so, we don't need to come to your house to read most meters. Uh, generally, you might see an official from BVIC come. That's because we notice that there's a discrepancy somewhere and we need to check it out and confirm. Uh, but yes, I can, uh, we have the ability to just go in front of a machine or computer and check uh, each one's, everyone's meter. So we don't need to come to your house. Uh, and Maybe that's why you don't see many of us. So we don't have this um, issue of saying that we're going to just I want to say, imagine what your bill is. We don't do Average that. Average from a previous right. bill or yeah. something to charge. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be, but let um, Sully, Miss Sully, the answer. Hi, Cathy. Carmen Sully, Chief Financial Officer. Just to compound upon what Dr. Smith said, uh, we do have the capability for over probably 12 years now to automatically read meters within the, the corporation. You sit at the computer and you read the meters. Um, at certain times, there may be... Um, technical issues where we have to disperse the meter readers. And then there are other issues where it may not be often, but there may be some averaging of bills. Um, this comes in when you go to a customer's house, uh, a property, and they have the meter locked up. We can't get to the meter, there's a dog there. So in um, minute instances, we do have to average bills, but that's beyond the corporation. And so, just to let the public know that the corporation needs to have access to its meters at all times. And if we cannot get access to your meters, only in those instances that we are forced to do average billing. But not outside of that. Okay. Yes, yeah, so before, before we, we went off to that, uh, you were given, the finance was given us a runner. But I think from what we would have seen already, gives us the big picture as to how how the billing is being done and added a little more clarity, but I know mm -hmm. I don't want the clock to run out on us and we have some other officers. Um, I think one of the things that we have to get is a little update on what's happening with Yas Van Dyke. Okay, um, Just Van Dyke, we were supposed to actually repair that cable on Sunday, uh, yesterday, uh, but the weather uh, decided that they would, didn't want us to do it. Uh, so we we actually on a day-to-day -day basis looking at the the waves at um, Cap Bones Bay, and uh, once we feel like we could get maybe a good twelve hours, perhaps then we'll just uh, go there and make the repair. So, uh, like I say, it's not we don't like the fact that we have to maintain a generator on Yasmin Lake. It's costly to us. But I just like to reiterate again that any sta any statement that is made anyway that suggests that we are intentionally charging the people of Yasundaik extra because of the additional costs to maintain electricity over there are uh, untrue, right? Um, and actually quite ridiculous, to be frank. Okay, so I just want that to be very clear. And that is why we have the position in Beaver Electricity that 
when a statement was made in the House of Assembly, it was a mistake. That's what we think, right? And we wish to continue to believe that uh, because, um, you know, there's, there's just nothing to suggest that that could be so. Um, so I'll just allow um, what I'd like for Mr. Velak to say to the viewing public is what we've been doing on Yasmin uh, recently to ensure that that generating set uh, continues to operate, okay? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Kathy. I'm Charles Velak, the generation engineer at BVIC. So we've been um, conducting some maintenance on the, on the generator on Jasper and Dyke, solely because um, at the end of the day, the, we have to maintain a generator. The generator is maintained every 250 to 500 hours on, on Jasper and Dyke, which we conduct. And that's it. I, 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 I think I remember in December or November mm -hmm. it was when we um, sat, uh, there was a the discussion about um, more frequency in, in an officer or to being over there in terms of to ensure that things go smooth. How has that been going? Yes, we in December and January, we had someone stationed on Joss Van Dyke to ensure that the generator runs efficiently and running um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think we have stopped that now because we, we, we tend to send people over there during the high periods. So we don't have anybody ready right now. But for December and January, we had somebody over there. That's the second half of January. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think you have one other officer in the air that hasn't said anything just yet. You have said something. <laughs> Good afternoon, Cathy Damon Jennings, TND Department, Acting TND Engineer. Uh, my role in this, this part is to assist the generation engineers when they have to take up the engineer to do maintenance. I have to send a couple of guys over there to, you know, separate the power because we can't put the entire island on one time. So we have to separate the lines, put on portion, and then put on the rest. So that's the task of my guys, as well as the JVD cable repair that we are waiting on. Uh, and from the feedback that you would have get, uh, been getting, or if you would have been over there yourself, uh, what is the atmosphere among the people of here when they can deal with the situation? I can't get say I get much feedback, um, but I think everybody's anxious to get the repairs done, so that's what we're trying to aim for right now. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Smith, um, yeah, we're we're down to the bottom of it in terms of the time, mm -hmm. but I really want to thank you for affording. I know since last week I contacted you for this interview. Mm -hmm. About the thing that I admire is every time I come, you have a team. With yes. Them. And I'm thinking I'm coming to one man to answer my questions. You have a full team with you. Uh, any closing statement that you would like to make at this time? Uh, just simply that, uh, just like the, the, the public to know that BVIC is, continues to be committed to providing you with reliable uh, power, reliable, clean uh, electricity, uh, and that. Um, you know, you could be assured that we will do whatever we need to do to make sure that continues to be the case. Uh, on the commercial side, I'd also like to reiterate again, I think maybe for the third time, uh, that if we do not have any inclination within the Beaver Electricity Cooperation to uh, charge anyone excessive amounts for the electricity bills. It's just not in our DNA. Uh, it goes against our professional integrity, uh, and we just want to be fair and uh, charge you according to the legislative fees that have been approved by the House of Assembly uh, for the um, electricity that you've used. And once we continue to do that, then we'll do so in as efficient a manner as possible uh, so that we can serve you, the public, uh, well. Okay. One other thing. Has the fuel surcharge gone down for in, in January? It's falling, I think, right? I think it is. Yeah, it is. It's falling. Yeah. It's, it's on a downward trend. I don't know what's going to happen at the end right. of this month, but it's on a downward trend. Yeah. Nothing. Every prayer does not come up. Well, thank you so much for your time, team. Thank you so much, viewers, for joining us for yet another edition of The Big Story. Get your cheers. We know that where you choose to bank matters. 
and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life, we will live well.